Hey, what's up, everybody? Pen here. By the time y'all see this, it's going to be probably Saturday afternoon. Um, I'm working a second shift these days, so I'm going to be at work. But we're going to take a break from the tech talk, the gaming and all that. And we pretty much I'm going to be clearing the air on something, some misinformation, you know, that was sent to me just a little bit a while ago, you know, just clearing up the air. There were some sources that was listed that I definitely could speak on, but the person in question, I could not identify them a hundred percent. I have a fair idea who sent the disc, but without the hundred percent confirmation, I do have the name blocked from the tweet. This does come from Twitter though. Just going to do the video, get this over with. All right, so you see here, here's a screenshot from Twitter. Um, it has been edited and only from the top and the bottom for full transparency. There's names that's listed, there's ads. This is from Twitter. If you really want to find it, you know, my stuff is public, but showcasing the name specifically in question without getting the 100% confirmation um, I can't give you a name, unfortunately, but I can give you a backstory before we get into this. And we're going to be going from top to bottom. I'm, I'm going to be addressing everything that you see now, a little bit of context. Um, this was when I was playing horizon forbidden West on PlayStation five. It was on a Sunday afternoon. And I was linked in with a casual, friendly conversation. You know, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite season of the year? Things like that. It was colleagues and um, associates of other colleagues having a genuine conversation. This is when this random um, troll per se came out of nowhere and pretty much tried to start some things and we're pretty much going to get to the bottom line of it. Start off as saying MSN, the old group jumper, pretty much hinting as I was going from group to group to group. But if this person had their facts straight, I was only a part of one tech slash streaming group on YouTube, and that is MS7. So you have to actually know the history behind these things before you actually run your mouth. But I believe I know who it is. And there's only been two issues and this is going to be extremely silly. So I'm just going to give the back end of it. This person had a telegram group a while back. And I noticed I wasn't active in the group. You know, when people add you to groups, but you're not really active in it or really viewing. So I wanted to clean up my telegram, things like that. I left the group, no hate, no shade, no nothing. The person in question inboxed me saying, is there an issue? I told him, no, I'm just not active in the group. I would rather leave if I'm not being contributive to the group or contributing to the group. My apologies. That was that. And then there was a conversation of a Discord server, you know, that was being made for the MS7 group in um, question. And someone had made the server without me knowing because it was agreed that I would make the server originally. And it was some miscommunication going on. So when the new server was being made, you can kind of see how that was the issue. Cause then the person felt some type of way, honestly, but outside of that, there has been no type of drama going on. I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible. So this person listed, Brooklyn Coral Cutters, DST, and MS7. I'm just going to go down the list, but there's a message. You have been called out multiple times from multiple people for being an absolute snake, using people, laughing emoji, and seriously, don't try acting like a gangster on Twitter. We all know you did a runner from Dale. This was you, Scan Mark, and you know you can add clips and videos on Twitter. So we're just going to go to the top of the list and we're just going to go to the bottom. We're going to address this fully. All right. Okay. So this particular um, chat replay, these screenshots is from a show 
on Brooklyn channel since he was listed as number one in that tweet directly towards me. And this was from the home theater entertainment. So, you know, this is me being a moderator. This is me contributing to the chat. I'm genuinely liking the conversation. This isn't meant to throw any shade, any shots or anything. This was me being literally a part of the conversation while the live stream was going on. So these are things that I said in the chat replay that relates to what I have in question. So I say Plex doesn't have menu support that Sapiti or Sudu has, which is true. Plex doesn't support menus that you would see on the actual disc. But 4K UHD HDR Adobe Vision is possible through a MKV file. You have people in the home theater community, core cutters, who rip their files or get access to an MKV file that can be between 50 to 100 gigs in size. And whatever the bit rate is on the original disc, they will have access to. I'm giving y'all some context here. This video may be a little long, but I'm giving y'all context. I mean, that's that's important here. So Donald says, hey, Penn, but some MKV have audio issues. Sometimes depends on the movie. I've seen it. Yes, the, the, depending on the source material and the equipment that you own, that you're using that material with, you can run into some issues. You can. But then we have another end user, Gutter Snipes, says, I play 4K in my plugs. I'm, I'm going to get to why these comments are important. Then my response is, depends on your source equipment, all my MKV play fine, 4K, 5.1, 7.1 audio. And Donna responded, facts. Then I listed here a custom K app that we know is popular, also plays the menu through a certain version also. I'm talking about Cody, how it can play... Um, Blu-ray and they can bring up the menus. Um, there's like a whole thread about that over the internet. So if you're interested in that, I advise you to research and check it out. So I'm going to be going to this in question. All this is for, um, it's the week before the stream. I'm going to play back in this video so you can have some context to it. So this is a week before what I'm about to play is the following week. Okay, so I'm about to play it. Well, we're gonna wrap it up on this. And um I was saying that Plex don't play 4K content, right? Um yes, Plex play 4K can not um can press content, but not non-compress. Mm. You know, and if anybody want me to back up what I'm saying, just say the word because I tried it. Because you know, I heard I, I I go back and I read my comments. And I see a few people say, oh, well, you know, Plex play my 4K content. Okay. So I went back and I tried my 4K content, non-compressed content, 80 gigs, 90 gigs, 100 gigs. It do not work. It was skip, 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 skip. And if anybody want to challenge me on it, let me know. Hmm. Okay. So I pretty much played the clip there. Now, in reference to the comments from the previous week, you know, the people who were in the chat contributing to the conversation, I was one of those people giving out good knowledge, things of that nature. Um, this is where it sort of fell apart to me. It's not about the challenge per se. It was more about the principle. If it was a discussion about something that you wasn't totally sure on, I would have just rather you have just came clean and said that it would have been more respectable, but it, it wasn't so much on a challenge because that's what we do as creators, especially before the terms of services, we were showing stuff, but let me check this out here. So I was actually in the market for a network attached storage. Now I kept hearing from a colleague of mine that I had talked to in the background about Synology. So Synology was always coming up in my ear, was always in my ear, right? So I got a basic unit in my eyes. It's the two bay, it's the DS-218. Um, I just gave my first impressions. 
I showed off and this is, you know, the um, Plex screenshot, you know, this is not like a whole video or whatever the case may be. But the point of the purchase was to see if it can run Plex, MB and Jellyfin, you know, at the same time as the server. I just wanted to test it out to see what were its limitations. I'm giving y'all context here. This Avengers Infinity War, this is a remux. Basically, this is a one to one copy of the Blu-ray disc. This is 60 gigs. I'm about to show you the receipt on Blu-ray.com. Official source. Avengers Affinity War. Notice how the resolution says upscale. This movie wasn't shot natively in 4K. Look at the bit rate. 46.39. And Plex, this 60 gig file is going to translate directly or it's going to be a little bit more because maybe there's some subtitles that was attached to it that wasn't needed. Basically, what I'm getting at is that it does play to uncompress. It just depends on your equipment and your settings. That's all. But with this, um, I took it a step further and I wanted to try out Doom. So you see here, um, this is also from Plex. Uh, this is the Doom 2021. This movie is a reference quality. Um, it's a remux. So it's 86.11. You know, this is this is the Plex metadata, guys. You see where it says D-O-V-I? You know, that's, you know, um, just that's the Dolby Vision metadata at the time of this video. This was March 16th, 2022. So, you know, so this was a while ago, but... I'm just showing you certain things in which I didn't have an issue playing this, but it comes down to your equipment and your software and your settings. It wasn't so much of an issue of the challenge because I really wish we can show showcase us playing movies on YouTube directly so that we can actually get a visual of what's going on. But unfortunately we can't. So, just know that with the right settings and just a preferred workflow of your choosing, you can get certain things done. But yes, it plays compressed and uncompressed. But it wasn't so much with the challenge. It was so much with the principle. And being someone in the chat kind of felt like you was taking a shot at me. And I pretty much had to like back off be like, look, this goofiness ain't even worth my time let me just try out this analogy at the time and let me see what this is hitting for based on what people are talking about so we're going to move on all right so i cleared up that look if, if, if it's a if, if it's a bad game intake a bad server take or a bad stream intake just know that when i'm commenting in the chat that's not me going off on nobody it's literally we're all in a conversation together now i will question it but there was no disrespect my intent and my purpose was to be a part of a community in a chat it wasn't to disrespect so brooklyn was number one on the list so i addressed it based on what i saw what i gathered and i moved accordingly second on the list is dst man oh man so check this out i had a public back and forth sort of with one or two of the members and that doesn't represent an entire organization or a group me having a disagreement with literally one or two people internally doesn't mean that they were used for clout or me snaking them. It was just a disagreement. Now, one of the disagreements um, went a little too far, but we all left that where it stood. You know, there was no extraness going on. Literally, there isn't a dedicated slide for this video on DST because I'm really not sure why it was mentioned in, in this capacity, in this context. Like literally what we did, but what, what we did is what we did. You know, that was it. No hate, no shade. I moved on. They doing the same, I'm assuming. That's that. 
Okay, so before I move on to this MS7 thing, I just want to let y'all know that if I if I'm adding information to your chat or if I happen to disagree, I'm not going at you. I'm just being a part of the conversation. That's literally it. Now, with this MS7 stuff, I'm putting this to bed because there's some misinformation that's going around this, that and the third. And to me, that ain't cool, especially when I've been more of in the forefront when that activity was still going around and I was calling certain things out and I was defending individuals, um, being a stand up guy per se. So certain things don't fly with me and um, we're going to get started on that in a minute. Now, pay attention um, this year this month and it's going to be a certain date attached to it september 10th 2021 there was some major shots taken at me internally inside of the ms7 group and on that particular date there was a morning show on um, by my ex shrinker sharon and it was on that particular date to where i saw some strange activity now what I am going to be addressing is things that was said to me publicly or showcased publicly. You notice how I'm not getting into anything personally or any behind the scenes work. I'm showcasing things that are public. So that morning before the morning show, before I get into the actual paperwork here, I did not make the show. I wasn't available. I was in the chat, but I was working on some things behind the scenes in which it will get me to where I am today. One of those things was the technical support fundamentals. I was sort of trying to get this course gathered in my head all the way and getting down the material. When you know that you're dedicated to a podcast or to a show, you know that that takes commitment, right? But a lot of the things a lot of the shows can't be met if you have other things going on in the background. In this case, this was one of them. Notice the issue date here. I left out the personal stuff, but I'm showing you literally what I was doing in my absence. But there was an issue. There was an issue. Now, I'm going to get into it. OK, so here's the issue. So. The time and the date actually check out usually around this time, 1245, 1241, things of that nature is when the morning show wraps up. Because when we was doing the podcast, it, it didn't really go over two and a half hours. Sometimes it did. Sometimes it didn't. But this is me clearing up some stuff in relation to the beginning slide that you saw in this presentation. Here's the thing with the MS7 thing. This was reported to me indirectly and directly. I'm going to speak on the indirectly first. It was reported to me indirectly in reference to what you're seeing on the screen, but it wasn't said out loud. It was never in a conversation by the person in question, which would be Sharon herself. It was directly reported to me through a DM not through her someone that was watching in the backgrounds but it was sent after this date i just want the full transparency here to be present this screenshot is multiple where it says my condolences to anyone who's ever lost me this isn't something that you post just because i'm dealing with some personal issues and trying to get an IT career started. This was a while ago, but I'm giving context as to what led up to my departure from ultimately what I believe to be my family, MS7, and her, which would be my ex. Here's the thing, and I don't know where y'all was born from or where y'all grew up or who raised y'all, this shit doesn't fly anywhere in any capacity in, in Detroit. In, in, in period, like the hood, the projects, 
you knew when you was growing up and you said something um, that was out of pocket, somebody either checked you, especially back in the old days, somebody either checked you right then and there, or they put you to the side later on and checked you about some stuff. So here's how I knew that this confirmed my decision was correct in terms of me cutting this individual off. Um, it says, and this is by Professor Sim, I believe, uh, says it right there. You know, this is their icons, all that. It says, damn, wall pain, where you at? Yeah, I was working on my course. I wasn't a part of the conversation. The stuff from Paper Plate where he says, real man, don't ask why we just deliver a two care ring, voila. To me, that's sort of like lighting up the mood. I really don't know if that was a shot towards me or not. I can't really confirm that. That's sort of like, this was out of nowhere, by the way. I was nowhere to be found in this, as you can clearly see. Um, it was literally me getting notified about this at a later time. So next one says, until he gives you his last name, you are just his boo thing. And then Professor Sim says, damn, pen 911, ha ha ha. And then I guess that's like a funny segment, how women in the public, how women with engagement rings walk in public. So there was some comedy being said, but that was after the fact. Um, one thing about this reckless behavior that I, I do not condone, this is not going to be no damage control. This isn't going to be anything to where you said it wasn't true. Um, I did not say this and that. Man lie, women lie. These receipts don't. And that's just the bottom line. So we're going to get into this and why, in my opinion, I think the group ultimately had to go away. Now, on a colleague show, he said that the group was done. That was a live stream. Um, that was the words out of his mouth. I didn't have anything to do with that. To me, I'm giving you my reality and what the facts actually is. Um, when we are talking about long-term relationships or commitment, you have to reciprocate the energy back that you're given. Um, this isn't like a one-sided street here. What I dislike about this extremely is that you're painting a picture as if I'm the bad guy when you didn't even give the context or the full story as far as what you contributed to the um, conversation and the relationship entirely. It wasn't about um, my intent and my purpose to you. The real elephant in the room is what exactly was your intent and purpose with me? That's the question that everybody's afraid to ask you. Literally everybody. You got to ask the right questions. This is no baby. You know, these are grown adults. These are grown women. You know, we don't have to be in this culture to where we go off on people, but we can actually ask logical questions to follow what we see. And this is just one of the questions that I don't necessarily have to answer because only you really know the answer to. And some follow-ups would be, why did you rat or snitch on your own colleague slash the person you was in a relationship with without giving a full context? And also a question would be, why did you feel so uncomfortable posting it on social media? Hmm. I like those questions better, but listen, I believe I showed what I can show. Um, I broke up with this woman December of last year. It's been over with. I don't condone this reckless behavior. And she got specifically a conversation as to why things led up to where they were. And you got to be truthful with the people at the end of the day. So to me, um, I'm in this video. If you expose yourself as a lion ass snake, then that's what you're going to get back in return. You're going to get cut off accordingly. It is what it is. Y'all can be upset. It is what it is about this. This is the truth. And it's the only truth. The group is dead because of dishonesty and disloyalty.
You heard it from the source. This is Pan Shut. Pan sign out. Peace out.